your worship is a weapon. We sit down to the devil. I don't mean physically sit down, but we sit down in our trial. We sit down in our trouble. Amen. And God is saying, come on, get up, boy. Come on, get up, girl, and give me some praise. I want to bring you through it, but I can't bring you through it if you don't open your mouth and praise me. Now, you can do all this right here all quiet. You can do all this all quiet if you want to. And I'm just saying wherever you are any old time, I don't mean right now, but my point is when you begin to lift your voice in verbal, audible praise, amen, you set the wheels of your miracle in motion. Come on. You have just turned the ignition in your miracle vehicle. Amen. It's, and the Lord is pressing down on the gas. He's turning the wheel. Amen. He's going to guide you to your miracle. Keep your hands up. Keep your voice up and worship him. He's going to bring you through. Somebody say, he's going to bring me through. Look at somebody and point at him and say, God's going to bring you through. Look at somebody else and tell him, say, God's going to bring you through. One more person say, God's going to bring you through. Hallelujah. I don't like the devil and I don't like his lies. Do you? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You come too late to tell me that there, there's, no, there's no power in all that. You come too late to tell me there's no power in praise and uh, speaking in tongues is of the past and it all died out with, the, with in acts and never happened. You come too late to tell me. I've been doing it since 19 uh, something. Whenever it was it? When I was 19 years, seven, how old was I? 17 years old, March 2nd, 1980 something, whatever it was. I forgot right now. 1980, is that what it was? I don't know, you're probably right. She's my daughter, she probably heard me say it so many times. Hallelujah. Remain standing for a moment. We're going to read one scripture, I'll let you sit down. 1 Kings 17 and 10. No, go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. You've been standing a long time. You, you, you just got right in here today and worship and just got in this vein of the spirit. Uh, we got to get in the vein of the spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be no apostolic bystander. Praise God. I am going to. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to give. Oh, I, I'm going to. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the Lord. Amen. Don't, don't forget. This is fast week. Monday through Thursday. Let's push that plate back, church. Come on, let's, let's push that plate back. As I said last week, as I said last week, last Sunday, if, if by chance you get to a point uh, on a Monday or a Tuesday and you can't handle no more and, 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 you, and you fail and you eat, you didn't really fail. I don't say like you sin. But you know what? Restart it the next day. Start again the next day on your fast. Start again. Give it another try. Push that plate back again. You can do it. You can go four full days if you want to. That's what we're asking. Four days of fasting. The following week is going to be four days of concentrated prayer every evening, Monday through Thursday, the following week. Hallelujah. And then the following week is the outreach. Praise God. I want to talk today. and It just seemed to be confirmed in my spirit more than once today. And I struggled last night with it, but it just seemed today it's just been confirmed in my spirit. I want to talk to you a few minutes about God's ability to sustain us. I don't have a fancy title. I only just titled it Fancy Title. That's, that's the title, Fancy Title. God's ability to sustain us. God's ability to sustain you. Hallelujah. We read in Exodus about the Exodus. We read about the, the, the exiting, the exodus of the, the children of Israel and, and, and different ones, authority figures, uh, uh, theologians have tried to number how many approximate people have come out, came out of Egypt with Moses and some say three million, some say seven million. I don't know what it was, how many millions or hundreds of thousands. It, I, I don't know that it matters, but it was a lot of people li living in Egypt. It was a lot of people living in Egypt and they begin to walk through the wilderness. They begin to walk through the desert. And you and I, we begin to walk through our desert land sometimes in living for God. And we walk through our wilderness times and uh, days and nights and weeks and months. Sometimes we go through constant discouragement because of our situation and what's happening in our life. And amen, it's like a wilderness that we're going through. But let me make one little point about that story. The Bible teaches us plainly that as they walked around that wilderness 40 years, and it was only, what, a, like a three-day journey or something, but they kept going in circles and they kept missing God. <laughs> but even though they kept messing up and they kept missing God and they kept going in circles, 
<laughs> and they never got to their journey for 40 years. Through that whole time, God sustained them. God sustained them. Amen. It got cold at night in the desert. I don't know how cold did it get. 20 degrees, 30, 40, whatever it got, 50, whatever it was. It was cold. You know, when it's 100 degrees, 50 probably feels cold. I don't know how cold it was at night, but I know it gets cold in the desert at night. But the Bible says that he sustained them with a pillar of fire that hovered over them. It was just like a heater. It was just like, a, like an exhaust fan blowing heat down on them at night and kept their camp of millions of people warm. I want to tell you that God is going to sustain you. And through the heat of the desert, through the, through, through the heat and the, and, the, and the bright sun, usually no clouds just beating down on them. 100 degrees, 105, 115, 120 degrees sometimes. Just baking them, they felt like alive at times. God sent, the Bible says, a pillar of cloud by day. A cloud he would send by the daytime so big. That it would just block the sun of all those million. You know, there's about three million people or so in Chicago. Can you imagine a cloud that would just hover over Chicago and protect the people from the beating sun as they walked walked on that blazing sand? And the Bible says that their shoes did not wear out. Huh? Can you imagine that? By the, them women wouldn't, I can imagine them women, men, women was getting mad about that. You can, oh my, Lucretia, I don't know how many pairs of shoes you said you got, but you told me one time you got lots. And I know you wouldn't want to be there because, uh, amen, when, they didn't have her favorite shoe store there. And the Lord was making all those high heels and flip-flops and, and pumps. Uh, they was all enduring for 40 years. Uh, amen, all those guys that bought the floor shine. Amen. Got, got their sneakers. Got the gym shoes. Amen. Whatever shoes they was wearing, walking, walking around for 40 years, they didn't wear out. Can you imagine that? They didn't wear out. I'm talking about God sustaining you. God sustaining us. God has the ability to sustain us. Let's read a scripture here in 1 Kings, as I mentioned. Chapter 17. Amen. I'm going to read a little bit about Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, the Bible says that God sent Elijah to the brook called Cherith. He sent him to the brook called Cherith, a little stream of water. Because previous to this, uh, uh, Elijah had spoke a word of faith. He had spoke a word of faith and he, and he said, let there be no rain or dew until I say it. And there became a famine in the land. There was a famine growing because, you know, when there's no water, things begin to die. Cattle begins to die. Little rabbits begin to die. The lakes and the rivers begin to dry up and the fish begin to die. There is no water to put on your crops. So your crops begin to die. But, but during this situation, God says, Elijah, I want you to go down to the brook. And I'm going to sustain you there. I'm going to take care of you, Elijah. So Elijah goes down by this little babbling brook. There wasn't much of it left. And the scripture says that God sustained him every morning and every evening with dinner. God sent to Elijah uh, a raven. And in that raven's beak had bread and flesh. Had dinner, steak, and Hawaiian bread. Anybody like Hawaiian bread? Oh, I wonder if he got that bread from Hawaii. Oh, I love that sweet Hawaiian bread. Can you imagine? I wonder if he told that raven, next time, a little, cook it a little bit longer, okay? I mean, telling that raven, next time, I don't want it so, you know, so, so rare, you know. Get it about medium well, like Pastor Otis likes his steak, you know. 
and, uh, and, and you know, make it, make it, uh, you know, some pork chops next time too, you know. There's no telling what he put on that menu when the bird flew away for next time. Hallelujah. God has a way of sustaining us. God has a way, amen, where there seems to be no way, as we say all the time. Amen, when the trial, amen, has lasted so long. Amen, when the discouragement, amen, is so strong in our lives where you just want to quit, where you just want to give up. When everything and every, everything in your ear says stop, you might as well, this is not working. Try something else. Go somewhere else. Do something else. Somebody said the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. I've come to serve the devil. Notice we're not quitters. Look at somebody say, I'm not a quitter. Look at somebody say, I may be going through it, but I'm not going to quit. Come on. My father's blood is flowing through my veins. Hallelujah. I said, My daddy's blood. And I'm not talking about Harlan Travis Rodas. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the Father of lights. Amen. With whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. Hallelujah. My God, he's given us the victory. We got to hold on to it in the time of trouble. He's able to sustain us. Chapter 17, verse 10. So Elijah rose and went to Zarephath, a little town. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, he called to her. See, previous to this, he says, uh, there's a wo woman over there. When you get to Zarephath, there's going to be a little widow woman. I say little, she might have been big. I don't know if she was little or big or tall or short. I don't know anything about her. But she was a widow woman. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to command this widow to sustain thee. Isn't it something that God will use a problem person? Amen. When I say a problem person, she was broke. She had no SSI. She had no Social Security. She had no pension. And there was a famine on top of the problem. So why in the world didn't God send him to the rich man in town that had a crop, that had some things, you know, back in his barn, he had some things. No, no, that's not the way God does things. God will God God do it backwards. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll do it, it looks like confusion. God's not the author of confusion, but his ways are not above our, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. So he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this woman there, this widow woman, to sustain you. So he gets to Zarephath, he gets to the gate of the city. Behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. Give me my few little sticks. And he called to her and said, hey, hey, fetch me. I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Somebody say a little water. Fetch me a little water. He didn't ask for a gallon. He didn't ask for a lot. Just give me a little drink. I've been walking. He knew she was in trouble. He already knew she was going to be there because God had told him. And see, God was testing the widow woman. God wanted to give this widow a miracle. God wanted to give you seniors a miracle. God wants to bless you unemployed people with a miracle. Oh, you that's going through it, God wants to bless you, but he's going he's gonna to test you. He's going to try you a little bit. Amen. He was testing the widow woman. Was she going to pass the test? She didn't know what the test was, but the test was, give me a little drink of water. That's all the test, see, because she didn't have much, because Cherith, the brook, had already dried up, and the prophet had to leave, and that's where God said, go to Zarephath. I'll have a widow sustain you. God's got ways. You ain't going to figure him out. I said, you're not going to figure him out. Oh, no, no. We got these little peanut brains and we think we're going to figure God out. How he's going to do it. We're thinking about it every day. We're thinking about it all night. We dream about it. We, think, we worry all night long. We wake up early worrying about our mess. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, God's already got it figured out. And God might send some little widow woman by your way 
or I should say a prophet your way that says, give me a little drink. Give me a little something. Give me a little. And, and, and see, this is where sowing seed. You got to sow spiritual seeds everywhere you go. That's why you need to be a witness wherever you go, because you're sowing spiritual seeds. You're giving away a little water. You're giving away water to somebody that you don't realize. When you come into the church, sow your, sow your money seeds. Pay those tithes. Give those offerings. Hallelujah. You know why? Because God's testing you. God's testing you. Give me a little water. Just 10%. The prophecy here in typology is God. Okay. And the widow woman in typology is always, the church is always a woman in typology. It's not always a woman, but a woman is always a type of the church. Let me say it that way. So here the woman is in typology, a type of the church, and the prophet is a type of God. And, and, and he's saying, give me a little water. I'm going to let you keep the 90%, but I'm going to bless that which you give me. You give me the 10%. You give me some time in the church. You be a witness for me. And I'm going to bless wherever and whatever you give me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, pastor, pastor, pastor. You know, no, we, say, we need to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said we need to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. I'm not the one. But I'll tell you what, if you'll step out in faith and give your little bit of water, give your little drink, give what God wants you to give, and God is going to bless you. How do we know? Let's finish the story. Let's finish what it is. Oh, my. It's not all about money. Don't misunderstand me. But God will test your heart because he wants to see if you love your filthy lucre. As the Bible calls filthy lucre. He wants to test you and see if you love it more than him. If you, what, what cause do you see for the future? Do you see that this world is ending in Jesus? It's coming soon. And it's not going to do us any good if we keep it anyway. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Made me thirsty. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Bring me a morsel of bread. Don't bring me a, a loaf. Don't bring me a slice. Just bring me a morsel. Just bring me a little smidgen, just a, a few fingers full. Just pinch off a, a bite for me. Bring me a little water. And a morsel of bread in thine hand. God wants to take your little bit that you give. And God wants to sustain you for as long as you need sustaining. If you need sustaining six months, he wants to sustain you for six months. If you need sustaining for 16 years, he wants to sustain you for 16 years. But he may test you and see, will you give your little bit of water to the prophet? Will you give your little morsel of bread to the prophet? So why was that a test for her? We'll find out if it was a test for her. Let's find out if it was a test. Let's read the passage. And she said, 12, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. But a handful of meal in a barrel and a little cr cr oil in a cruise, just a little oil in a vessel. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, not three, two. That's all I could find. Everybody's grabbing the sticks. Then I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. This is what she's saying to the prophet. And you want something from me, in other words? And Elijah said unto her, fear not. I want to say to somebody in here, fear not. Yes, fear not. Come on now, you ain't hearing me. Fear not in your trial. Fear not in your test. Fear not in your problem. Fear not in your dilemma. Fear not in your sickness. Fear not. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but... Go ahead and make your cake, but make me a little, make me there of a little cake first. 
first. Put me first. Prophet is saying, put me first. I want to eat before you. God is saying, put me first. God is saying, put me first. Put me first with your money. Put me first with your time. Put me first with your energy. Put me first, God is saying. I want the best of you. I want the best from you. I want everything you can give me because I'm coming back. I want to save your children. I want to save your grandchildren. But put me first. I'm testing you. I'm testing you. Put me first. If you'll put God first, church. As a way to blow your mind. Yes. He has a way of sustaining you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When I see this church, 14,000 square feet and all this parking lot and all that we've got. And I see the group that we have that is not large. And I see the little bit that comes in here on Sundays. Amen. Not even a Wednesday offered we don't take. But I see the little bit, Sister Rodas, that comes in here. Hallelujah. It amazes me that God is sustaining this ministry. That God is sustaining this. Why? Because it's not ours. It's his. When you give a little bit, God can give a lot. When you give a little bit, God will, not might. God will, not maybe. But God will sustain you. He will make a way. He will fill in the gap. He will help you out. Am I saying your bills will never be passed through? I'm not going to make that promise. But what I'm telling you, in somewhere, somehow, in some way, God is going to give you the end result. God will be the victor. And he'll make you triumphant in his victory. He will bring you through. Hallelujah. I've been through some things. I've had to hold on to one scripture. I've had to hold on to one scripture at times. And that one scripture says that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. That all things, somebody say all things. <laughs> all things work together for good to them who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. We need to get that in our spirit. We need to get that in our crawl. When you're going through stuff, I don't know why I'm going through. I don't know why the test is the way it is. But God has got his hand in this thing somehow. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Make me a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Now he begins to prophesy to her. Right. Begins to speak unto her the word of the Lord. Right. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. You got just a little bit of meal and it's just going to last you a few days, lady. I'm telling you, that little bit of meal that's going to last a few days is going to last until this drought is over with. It's going to last until the crops grow back. It's going to last until the stores are full in town again. It's going to last again. It's going to last until, amen, the brook has water flowing again. It's going to last until rain comes down again. It's going to last until there's dew on the ground again. God. It's going to make a way. Yes. Hallelujah. The, meat, the barrel of meal. Can I, I can imagine she took that little bit out of there and made her little cakes for herself and her son and but took the prophet a little cake first. And they ate their little cake and the next time she went out there, gathered some more up. The next day gathered some more up thinking to herself, I know this should have been all gone by now because I know. Hallelujah. You remember the story with Jesus over there had, what, thousands of people. Was it 3,000 or 5,000 people? 5,000 people. And a little boy with a couple fish and a loaves of bread. 
Next thing you know, there were baskets, plural, full of loaves of bread and fish that they were handing out to multitudes of people because one little boy gave one little amount that he had. He gave what he had. That's all he had, church. And sometimes you're giving all you've got. You're giving all you've got. I'm telling you, God is not ignoring that. God is watching you. It's going to be like Cornelius on the roof. Or was it Peter on the roof? And Cornelius, uh, uh, he was in prayer and fasting. And, and, and an angel came to him and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer. God has seen your fasting. God has seen your giving alms. And God is going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. There's a blessing coming. Somebody put your hand on your chest and say, there's a blessing coming. There's a blessing coming. I'm claiming my blessing. I'm claiming my blessing in Jesus' name. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Somebody say many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Oh, my God's got a way. Oh, my. Sometimes I just want to know what God's doing. Oh, God, how are you going to do this? God, how are you going to figure this out? What's the plan? Oh, would you get going already, God? You ever just feel like telling God, would you get going already? Come on, I want to push the start button. You know, you got that microwave, you got a start button. I just want to hit the start button. Come on, God, let's get this thing going already. Come on, God, let's get the miracle in the process. Amen, but you don't know when a man of God is going to walk up to you and say, Hey, it's time for a miracle. Hey, God's got a blessing on the other side. Hey, God's going to do what he said now. God's going to bring it to pass. Let's lift our hands and praise him. Come on, let's lift our hands and love him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's lift our hands and love him. Come on, let's give him some praise. If you believe the word of the Lord, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. I'm going to end it with this story right here. It was four lepers. Four lepers over there, I think it was in 1 Kings, Second Kings, somewhere wherever it was. And those four lepers, they couldn't go into town they couldn't buy what they needed. They were poor. Everything they had, all the clothes they had were just rags. They didn't eat like they needed to. They hung together because they had nobody else. The, the, the healthy people didn't want them. You know, it's just like the AIDS epidemic. You know, back in the 80s when we started hearing about HIV and AIDS, everybody was scared to death. Amen. If somebody with AIDS sat on a toilet, nobody would get near them. If somebody had AIDS, oh, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. We've learned better about all that. But that's how it is, amen, with, with leprosy. And those four lepers was hungry. They needed some, some things uh, in their life. They needed God to move. And there was a camp of the Assyrians, and the Assyrian army was there. And the scripture says that, that God, God made a sound of Horses in battle. God made the sound of chariots running. And evidently it was very loud. Because when the Assyrian army heard it, they began to say, hey, it must be king so and so. Hey, it must be king so and so. All these kings have come upon us. Amen. They're getting ready to attack us. Here they come. And the Bible says that the Assyrian army left their tents they left the fires burning. They left the clothes where it was laying. They left the food where it was cooking. They left everything. And they began to run out of their camp. Right. These four lepers. These four lepers. You know, sometimes we're just like poor little lepers. Mm -hmm. Thinking, God, where is God? And how can I... How can God help me? And what is God going to do? Is God finally going to come to my rescue? And God's got a plan. He's going to run the enemies out of your life. He's going to run the enemies out of your life. He's getting ready to make a sound, a sound of tens of thousands of chariots. He's getting ready to make a, 
a sound of hundreds of thousands of warriors running toward the camp. Just because the four lepers didn't hear it didn't mean it didn't happen. Just because you don't know how it's going to happen don't mean it's not going to happen. And, and so these four lepers begin to peek around the corner. They begin to uh, look over into the camp. And they're not seeing anybody in the camp. And where are all those guys at? You know, they don't want to go over there and get killed. So they're not hearing anything. So they get closer and closer. And they step right into the camp. They begin to look into the tents. Lamps are burning. Dude left a plate of food. Man, that looks good. But there's got to be somebody here. They go over there to the to the where the tent where they make all the food. Nobody's in there. The cooks are gone. They look over there where all the weapons are stored. The weapons are laying all around. Hey, Amen. There's nobody here. Tens of thousands of Assyrian soldiers, no doubt, have run out of the camp. Get the picture. We're almost done. Run out of the camp. Why? Because God made a sound that they could hear. I wonder when I rebuke the devil and when you rebuke the devil, what does the devil really hear? When you start your praising, you start your worshiping, what does the devil really hear? Huh? I said, what does he really hear? Oh, he may think God himself is stepping right into that situation and says, get out of my way. Hallelujah. Amen. Your praise and your worship may sound like a hundred thousand warriors coming to your rescue. May sound like a, it may sound like a million chariots coming to your rescue. Let's all stand. Praise God. I know we've had a good prayer. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Let's lift our hands and love him. Come on, every hand up right now, every eye closed. Come on, let's love him one more time.